ठीक है आप लोग को दिख रहा है ना मेरा ये यस यस ओके सो आई एम जस्ट पुटिंग इट ऑन प्रेजेंटेशन सर, वो अपने आप बोलेंगे तो आ जाएंगे नो प्रॉब्लम यस मेक हिम को हो सो दैट ही कैन हिज पावर पॉइंट कैन बी सीन यस आई कैन Just a minute. I'll make you co-host to it. Sir, your name is not there. Kerala, sir. What name? You are entered with a different name. My name is. Should I share my screen? K K K K. किस नाम से आपका ओके ओके वेट आ गया ना के के आ गया ना ओके 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 मनीष सर यू कैन ओनली मेक हिम कोस्ट बिकॉज आई एम स्टिल द कोस्ट Can I share my my uh, this thing, my screen? Ah, uh, you can share your screen. Yes. Okay. Hello. Ma sir. Can you see? Yes, sir. We can see. We can see. Continue. Yes, yeah, sir. Ah, oh, good. Right, right. Okay, so okay, thank you, everyone, and uh, uh, from my behalf, I welcome Dr. Lim for this uh, excellent uh, uh, webinar on uh, cervical endoscopy. So I am going to present a very initial uh, introductory lecture. Uh, so a few slides are there. which will basically tell people what are the different approaches we have for uh, cervical endoscopy and how it is uh, becoming one of uh, very common norm to and a go uh, golden procedure to treat cervical diseases so <clears throat> so basically where are we today endoscopic spine surgery is becoming increasingly increasingly popular in last few years and uh, Uh, the all credit goes to all the big bosses be it teachers who are uh, taking pains to teach everyone and uh, from uh, korea to uh, germany everyone is uh, learning from uh, those masters and that is why it is becoming more and more popular cervical endoscopy was considered undoable few years ago Those people were not thinking very seriously about this condition but now we see many and many people who are going and uh, doing anterior as well as posterior endoscopic uh, decompressions and uh, fusion surgeries anterior cervical decompression and fusion has been considered to be gold standard technique to date but now the things are changing with endoscopy coming in uh, picture we we have more and more people uh, going towards endoscopy because of many advantages it has things have changed and uh, to today we are very much much more confident in achieving the same results with full endoscopic procedures and we are going to learn uh, and uh, listen to the boss uh, about uh, how we are going to do it so basically we have uh, two approaches one is anterior and second is posterior anterior approach is uh, uh, we are going directly in the disc and uh, with the different instruments what we have with advancement of the instrument we are able to do it more um more more uh, clearly more properly and uh, more uh, we can we can uh, remove the disc and decompression much much easier under vision that is my main advantage the posterior is a little more complex it needs more steeper learning curve but it is uh, now with uh, more and more instruments 
the advancement in instrument we are able to do it uh, much easily compared to what it was uh, five or seven years back currently we have uh, uh, the de decompression and fusion what we do anteriorly it has a lot of complication rates the success rate is pretty good but complication rates are also very high so we have post operative hematoma we have unilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy CSF leakage, worsening of the pre-existing symptoms, Horner syndrome, implant failure, superficial uh, surgical wound infection, adjacent uh, segment disease, and pseudoarthrosis. These are the common problems which uh, surgeons have faced. And uh, that is why moving from uh, the conventional surgical treatment to endoscopy uh, is very, very uh, advantageous. And what are the advantages? Because of endoscope, we have a constant visualization of the uh, disc, we can visualize the nerves, we can visualize the important structures so we don't damage them. Minimal to none, no blood loss, minimal surgical trauma, minimal incision size, quick recovery, quick discharge, early return to work, and similar success rate. What more you want? So, this is how we are moving towards endoscopy. So, full endoscopic cervical discectomy, the main objective is, of course, decompression and that is only uh, with most uh, best of the safety what we have. So we decompress the existing exiting or spinal uh, exiting nerve root or spinal cord under direct visualization. That's the key point here. So what we can treat and what are the levels uh, which can be accessed through uh, this uh, cervical endoscopy? So basically, we can access central, paracentral, or foraminal soft tissue uh, soft disc herniations. Um, Easy disc to do is C4, 5, 5, 6, and 6, 7. C3, 4, and 71 are difficult but possible. And uh, uh, all the masters, they are doing it at all levels. And these are the different approaches we have for different uh, levels uh, at cervical spine, thoracic spine, and lumbar spine. So in cervical spine, you can see here anterior, in which uh, you have anterior endoscopic discectomy and posterior endoscopic discectomy. And posteriorly, uh, in thor thoracic spine, you can have uh, interlaminar and transforaminar and lumbar spine, all different kind of uh, endoscopic uh, surgeries you can do. I'm not going to in into detail, but these are the some of the instruments what we use uh, to make the surgery most, more easy. And uh, with advancement in this instrument, we can perform it much, much easier. So master himself is here. He's going to uh, uh, tell us how to do it and what are the different... Uh, uh, care we have to take uh, to become more successful uh, endoscopic spine surgeon. So these are the few of the pictures I have just shown uh, for anterior uh, cervical decompression and uh, this is posterior where we use little more bigger and uh, lo longer endoscope for uh, posterior full endoscopic cervical discectomy. And these are the few of the pictures of uh, showing how the instrument advancement is helping us, us to uh, improve the success rate of this uh, endoscopic surgery. So these are different birds we have. And you can see a few of the images where you can uh, visualize the nerve roots and exiting nerve roots and spinal cord under vision. You can remove the disc and do foramenotomy and you can achieve the best possible success rate in such patients. And these are the few of the uh, post-operative post MRIs to show how successful the procedure can be. So you can see uh, for a minute I've already done the posterior approach. You can remove that thing. So thank you very much. And uh, I hand over mic to moderator to invite Dr. Lim. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kailash, for the excellent presentation, short and concise to the point. So now I will uh, take this liberty to uh, introduce uh, uh, Dr. Lim uh, to all of you. Although uh, he requires no introduction, but uh, still I have some slides uh, which I will like to share. So uh, uh, welcome uh, uh, Dr. Lim uh, to this uh, uh, presentation and uh, this webinar. So, Dr. Lim is the leading endoscopic uh, neurosurgeon uh, from uh, South Korea and uh, 
uh, I am uh, just uh, enumerating some of his uh, various achievements. I think slides uh, will be, uh, you know, there, there, there can be lots of slides which can be mentioned about him, but uh, we will uh, just uh, confine to the basics so that the people who still don't know about him, they come to know about him. So, on he is uh, president of uh, Good Doctor Tune Tune Hospital at uh, Anyang, Korea. He is uh, executive director of uh, high-tech spine surgery, Society of International Interdiscal Therapy Society and a uh, member of AOSPINE, NAS, CNS. He's on review boards of several prestigious journals. Uh, he's uh, had several international publications and book chapters uh, to his credit. He's a pioneer and developer of PSLD, para-PSLD, PSLD, uh, PSCD, full endo uh, ACDF and uh, uh, other techniques. So you can see from his uh, uh, vast era, this this one technique uh, to learn one technique also it takes a lot of time, and he's a developer of so many uh, techniques. So uh, he has got more than hundred uh, scientific papers, and he's a pioneer of uh, advanced uh, endoscopic uh, spinal surgery. So welcome, uh, Dr. Lim, and uh, I will now request you to start your uh, uh, screen sharing. Sir, uh, if you can start your uh, to share your screen, please. So on on your uh, screen, you will see the option to screen share. You can just click it. Dr. Lim, can you hear me? Please unmute yourself and start your screen share. Hello? Yes, we can yeah, hear you, sir. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can okay. listen to you. I will start. We can hear you. Sir. Yes, you can start, sir. Okay. So we can see your screen. You can click on. Uh, uh, the presenter mode and start the presentation. Hello? Yes, we can see can you and it's your slides. Yes, we can hear you. We can see your slides. We are good Hello? to go. Okay. Hey. Hey. How are you everyone? Uh, uh, yeah, all good, sir. End of Spencer in Korea. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes, we okay. can hear you. Thank you for the <laughs> thank you for the having me uh, on the, the pandemic which is spreading uh, like uh, the wildfire is a challenge humankind has to overcome every now and then the uh, coronavirus this time is expected to be difficult to overcome. So tonight I will talk about the post-endoscopic uh, decompression for cervical stenosis and the herniated disc, and uh, endoscopic HD, uh, HDF for the cervical myopathy. Mm. As, uh, the, in my hospital, the microscopy retired already because we can do endoscopic uh, decompression uh, Sorry. Uh, okay. And that's complete compression for the lumbar uh, cervical the stenosis, and uh, we can do endoscopic fusion uh, for the three uh, HDF. So now the, in my hospital, microscopy has retired. So. So I think we don't need to the perform open surgery in the spine. Uh, uh, surgery anymore, expect, except a deformed surgery. The spine doctor 
the, who visit my workplace want to take a, a photo in front of microscopy. So you know very well uh, the endoscope is uh, has an advantage to using the, the instrument in narrow space. So we can find the every the path region, and we can do the, any the, the, uh, do the solve the problem in the uh, path region in, in narrow spaces. So, but uh, uh, we have performed uh, uh, looking back to operating history in the, the miracles, like that of uh, development of uh, science. But we have have been uh, performed the operation with uh, damage of uh, normal other other structures like uh, HDF and uh, the lymphoplasty. But uh, you know very well there's so many complications and the big uh, incision. Uh, so the way we can use uh, the, the new endoscopy uh, uh, system or a design for to use in spinal stenosis, we can use a one, two, three, four, five keratin punch with uh, uh, 5.8 the, the working channel. And uh, the advantage of endoscopic surgery, the world for cervical will be less invasive and uh, uh, the minimal the muscle injury, uh, the, uh, there is no detachment of paraspinal muscle from the spinal process, so the, we can guarantee less bleeding. So it's a safety because uh, and the, uh, it can reduce uh, nerve damage and uh, nerve post-operative kyphosis uh, due to the, there is no uh, detachment of paraspinal uh, muscle. And uh, the, you can do a central decompression, foraminotomy, and discectomy the posterior, and for the patient, the early embryation, the so short hospitalization. In complications, so sometimes we have a C5 neuroparty unit, you know, very wide. So we perform the, uh, for the uh, uh, three years, we perform the uh, 525 the cases of uh, endoscopic decompression, but the, just the two case of uh, the five, C5 palsy. Uh, and uh, post-operative hematoma, uh, so that's, that's what we need to uh, keep the drain, so one uh, day, and the, but the, there was no any infection in the cases. It's, it's uh, the one of the advantage of uh, endoscopic surgery. And uh, in the herniated uh, disc, uh, as, uh, the, uh, the space we have to decompression will be the herniated uh, disc uh, like this, and uh, uh, paracentral the foraminal stenosis and the central stenosis, and include the reception of uh, uncovered joint with endoscopy. The first, uh, the for the approach to the uh, foramen. Uh, from the midline, one centimeter is, is enough, and we can the access to the uh, trapezius muscle and the uh, medial board of uh, lateral the mass. It's the uh, directional framer is uh, just behind the, the facet joint, and uh, uh, we can uh, do the performing the laminectomy up and down and between the two of uh, both uh, uh, pedicle and we can uh, decompression the nerve root. And approaching is, uh, you know, the very well, this uh, the anatomy structure, boy point up and down the, uh, the lamina and the access the point, the landing point is a median margin of lateral mass. It's almost uh, 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 one centimeter from the midline. It's uh, the first uh, uh, the cutting the trapezius muscle uh, by uh, uh, trapezius fascia by number 10 braid is essential to reach to the region because trapezius fascia is very strong and then we can use uh, uh, mosquito forceps to make a space. But we have to reach to the touch the uh, bony structures and then we can insert walking sleeve and uh, uh, endoscopy. This, uh, the, um, certain, uh, my
might misunderstand the ventral the motor uh, the ventral mode is uh, the those are the sensory or uh, the, uh, ventral motor uh, uh, misunderstand uh, as a disc uh, because with the same color the white colors so you have to, should be careful to not damage motor the root and the keep the drain on the surface lamina for one day is very important to prevent the hematoma as a process first though we can find the uh, uh, point between the, the lamina and uh, we can do a uh, laminectomy and upper the c5 or low part c6 and then we can find that the root more the lateral part is uh, c6 uh, the root then we can find uh, the uh, x-ray area the foramen the location of foramen just be uh, below the the facet, each facet, facet joint and then we need to move the decompression this is the uh, the x-ray area and uh, some case of uh, bone bleeding we can use a punch and we can push the cancerous bone to prevent hematoma and the disc, but we, we uh, need we should be careful to not damage our the double root in case of C five root disc fragment. Discectomy. Okay, uh, it's uh, <laughs> the wave of the, the punch. You know why? Sometimes uh, uh, I'm the scale of a double root instrument, uh, might be able to damage double tissue during the operation. As case, uh, uh, pre operation, uh, the show, MRI shows. Uh, the left side of the the disc, and the post-operative MRI shows a full decompression, and the CT scan, pre- and post-operative. So with the endoscopy, you can find the, the uh, all another structure with the endoscopy. It's uh, the uh, three level with one skin incident with, without the sliding technique. We can do three level, four, five, four, five, six, six, seven, with one skin incident. It's a video. It's first the C4 fiber, the fiber root, and then we can across the the lamina, C5 lamina, and then we can find the C6 root. So I perform the central decompression and the C6 the decompression. And then we can across the C6 lamina to find the C7 root. So we can do the three level uh, decompression for the cervical, multiple the cervical the stenosis, foramen stenosis with one skin system using the sliding technique. And in case of uh, this, uh, the posterior, uh, the, the uh, ligand, thickness ligand fly boom, we can do decompression, cervical marrow fat. So we can perform this. Uh, root decompression and uh, central decompression and we can of course uh, approach to contralateral side contralateral side and uh, so, sometimes we uh, need to uh, check up uh, dynamic pure flex extension to know the, the approach the, the patient the problem was myopic and we uh, need to uh, decompression, remove the hypertrophy uh, over the ligand fly, fly boom, the pre and post operative, pre and post operative, the MRI shows a full decompression like this. And we can use endoscope surgery for the 
rheumatoid pulse arthritis C1 to be patient have a C2, the tomatum, the pain, the headache. So MRI shows uh, the C1 to the pulse arthritis. It's a pre and post-operative uh, the CT scan. You can access to the C1 to laser with endoscopy. It's a panus. And to compare, you can see the, the video. This. So another case, C2 decompression. So you know the very well, the pharmacy is an, an abnormal the ray of a fibro, the vascular uh, tissue or uh, connection to tissue. You can use the endoscopy for decompression, C2 root. And uh, 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 we can do the post uh, the uh, post decompression for the foramenal stenosis, paracentral disc myopathy, and uh, the some case of the central disc and uh, OPLA localized tire. You can do anterior post decompression, the fusion HDF like this. So you, we we uh, performed the uh, uh, open the microscope the HDF with the uh, uh, two inch the skin scar, but uh, with endoscope, it's just uh, 1.5 or uh, two centimeters is enough for the uh, one level the HDF. Uh, we can use uh, the one uh, five or six or seven uh, millimeter uh, uh, millimeter the cage with endoscopy with the process. And so the press, the first the, the pressing against the anterior cervical organ with the index finger, so you can reach to uh, the disc space, and we can uh, use uh, serial dilator, and uh, we can insert a working slip and uh, endoscopy, and then you can use drill uh, the punchy. It's a case patient have uh, C six seven. It's a video the during the operation, so the, the bleeding is very rare, and first a discectomy, and then we can find uh, the dura, like an open microscope operation, and we can insert the cage with endoscopy. Just so 1.5 is enough. And uh, the young male patient, myopathy, C6. So pre operative MRI shows the severe compression uh, uh, spinal cord. And uh, the process, the first, uh, we can reach to the anterior the surface of the, the disc. And then we can do the discectomy using the drill punch. And then we can remove the, the PLL to expose the dura and then you can insert the cage with endoscopy as a final and we need to keep the drain for one day to prevent the post-operative hematoma. Okay. So we have to keep the the uh, the drain for the prevent the damage of esophagus, and we can use uh, the punchy, the post-operative X-ray shows it's good, and the post MRI MRI shows a full decompression. Actual view. It's uh, just 1.5 centimeters square X-ray, and uh, male patient have a C5 disc myopathy also. Post-operative, pre-post-operative, and uh, this uh, the video endoscopic uh, decompression discectomy, and then we can expose. 
to Jura, then after to remove the PLL, and we can insert the cage with the underscore bit, pre and post operative. This uh, the uncovered uh, uh, contract lateral side uncovered double joint. Also, play the X-ray. Yes, so we need to uh, keep the, the drain always to prevent uh, the hematoma. And uh, I think that endoscopic HDF, uh, uh, the fusion rate, uh, subsidence, uh, and the uh, sagittal alignment were the same with uh, the open microscopy because we uh, use the same uh, the discectomy, same cage. Same alabon grafter, so, uh, so I will to publish it, the, the endoscopic H step soon. Uh, include the cervical set alignment, the set angle, and inside height. And so another one case is endoscopic, the ADR, the C six seven, the left side uh, discrimination, and. Uh, we can access to C5 or 6 with a serial uh, dilate. And the first, we have to the uh, discectomy after removal of uh, pre vertebral fascia. The during the operation, so no bleeding. So we can so guarantee the safety with a uh, good uh, visualization. And you looking first, uh, you saw this uh, video on YouTube. Discectomy. Using curet and uh, drill. Discectomy. It's a positive osteophyte. And then we can expose the dura. You can see the uh, pulsation of the dura. And then the measurement the disc height. And then we can insert the instrument with the endoscopy, just 1.5 centimeter enough. See mm, endoscopic ADL, and we can use uh, the, uh, the specialized retract to insert uh, the, the implant. Uh, it's my uh, chapter in the, the textbook the for endoscopic anterior uh, HDF uh, last year, and uh, I will publish it soon. Uh, for endoscopy HDF. So some uh, doctor asked me, why do you want to try the endoscopy, the three endoscopy HDF, open the minimal invasive super, uh, surgery is enough? My answer is like uh, the cell phone development. development. Well, for the cell phone is enough now, but you feel more convenient and effective with a 5G cell phone. So whether you uh, like endoscopic surgery or not, endoscopic surgery will be main operation in spine field in the near future. So uh, the, if we are trying to improve little by little, the like a cell phone, the world will be the better place to live. Uh, the, it's not uh, is uh, the, nowadays with the coronavirus, but the, the terminate will come again soon to save all of with the coronavirus vaccine. And in conclusion, endoscopic surgery is not dangerous and as you think endoscopic surgery, the uh, spine surgery continue to go and evolve with the development of science and technology in various way. So, uh, 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 you should be careful not uh, not uh, 
to contaminate coronavirus before release of vaccine because you are very the important sponsor in uh, your country. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, thank you very much uh, for a very informative and very uh, kind of uh, advanced topic for all the spine endoscopists. And uh, uh, we would like to have a few questions uh, regarding the uh, uh, mostly cervical as well as NTA cervical. And uh, if you do have time, then we can request you to show uh, one, one, okay. one, one of your video. If you do have so what, right now, well, what's video of of surgery of P, uh, PSCD or maybe maybe clip uh, ACDF or a PSCD if you do have right away. ACDF. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. This one. Can you see this video? Yeah, yeah. Yes. But first, uh, look at the, the, the ledge to anterior surface of uh, the disc space. And uh, uh, using the case and punch and the puree drill, you can do the uh, discectomy. And uh, we need to remove the PLL to expose the dura, and then you can insert the case under the endoscope view. Any question? No, it's good, good, yeah. What do you think it is uh, uh, the operation the, compared to the open microscope? So there. Yeah. <laughs> no bleeding. So we can see all another structure more detail with the endoscopy view. If you want to do a video, like this video, I will send you. Here, yeah. yeah. Mm. Hello. Can Dr. Manish? Yeah. Yeah, so can we start the questions? Do you have some questions from the audience? Yeah, uh, there was a couple of questions from uh, audience. Uh, are you doing uh, only disc removal from anterior approach or only ACDF? No, in case of uh, the uh, para, uh, paracentral disc or foraminal disc, uh, we can do, we can perform the posterior approach for discectomy, but the uh, huge uh, disc uh, and the central disc, uh, we have to uh, uh, approach to the anterior. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, one more question is there. How do you avoid carotid sheath and thyroid vessels like inferior thyroidal artery when you go from <laughs> anterior? So first, uh, like this, right? you can use a finger, the carotid, the complex, you can avoid the uh, carotid, the complex, the damage. Because uh, with a, uh, uh, press firmly with uh, the index finger, we can reach to the disc space and we can uh, avoid the damage of the uh, carotid complex. Thank you very much, sir. So one more question yes. some audience would like to ask because uh, you are master of cervical endoscopy and you can use any endoscope for cervical procedure, but people are a bit confused what sort of endoscopic size they uh, should use for anterior approach in terms of internal diameter and outer sheath of endoscope. Which endoscope is made to the same like this. The my scope is uh, the, the, uh, 
the, the working the sleep size working channel is a 5.7 millimeter working channel so we can use it's at the lens angle is 10 degrees and uh, with the 5.7 millimeter working channel we can use uh, the various type of uh, kerosene punch and the drill Okay. And, uh, yeah, please, Dr. Santos. So there's a, one question from my side, like uh, personally, uh, like okay. uh, people who are doing just uh, anterior cervical discectomy, they use smaller scopes. Uh, so do you use them, smaller scopes, just for anterior cervical discectomy? No, 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 no. No, no, no. It's uh, the, the small the endoscopic the laser from the, the Joymix, I know. Right, JMAX, just for uh, decompression, the the, the uh, disc space. But uh, with uh, the small the endoscopy, it's not easy to the uh, performing the HDF. Okay, and uh, there's one more question from the audience, like uh, uh, Mr. Vyapak from uh, Nepal. Uh, he's asking, like, uh, how do you insert the cage through the endoscope? In cervical dis, uh, fusion, uh, the first uh, the, we can uh, insert uh, the hold, cage hold. Okay. In, into the, the uh, five point seven working channel, and then we can set uh, the cage like this. Um, okay. This one. Can you see this video? Yeah, yeah. We can, yeah. We can insert the, uh, right. We can, we should ins insert uh, the uh, holes. And then we can set the KG. And then we can use the KG with, uh, under the endoscope view. Okay. There are so many videos on YouTube. YouTube. Yes, 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 yes. We all seen him. Yeah, mm -hmm. all, all of them. <laughs> and uh, uh, there's one question from my side, like... Uh, uh, do you use just standalone cages or uh, uh, are standalone right, cages right. enough? Standalone. Standalone. Yeah, enough. Standalone. Yeah, enough. Okay. Do you ever have any problem regarding the migration or, or the uh, displacement of the cages? No, there is no. No. No, there is no migration, the post-operative. Okay. And so uh, first, uh, there are some the complication. Yeah, right? Like okay. Hematoma. Okay. Okay. And. Uh, and if uh, if you do have like uh, while while approaching from the anterior side, if you do have a disc uh, which is superiorly and inferiorly migrated, a central disc which is superiorly either superiorly or inferiorly migrated, how can you uh, remove the fragment without doing corpectomy, or are you able to do a little bit of corpectomy with a scope? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very difficult. Very difficult migrated. Okay. Uh, I have no, no, no case like the migrated disc. <laughs> okay. Just the huge disc that uh, I uh, use uh, anterior approach. And uh, there's a question from the audience regarding the posterior cervical approach. Uh, where, what is the docking point? Uh, if somebody wants to know about the docking points right, for the posterior uh, approach. Point, right. Docking point is very important. Uh, the landing point is, is here. It's uh, the margin, medial margin of lateral max. Okay. Medial margin of lateral max. It's uh, the landing point. Okay. Mm, here, here, right? And uh, here. Medial margin okay. of lateral mass. And then we can access to the frame and the center and the space. And uh, I want to know, like, why, why are you doing the posterior foraminotomy? How much passive resection one can do? And 
<laughs> dude intra operatively how one can know like uh, how much uh, one has resected uh, to be safe not to produce instability why is a uh, very important uh the, the issue but uh, we we don't know how, how much it, uh, the the facilitator should be the cutting we don't know because uh, just the uh, the post operative uh, the analysis the shows just uh, 25 I think 25 the percent of facet joint, the resection is enough. Uh, and uh, we had to reach to the, uh, the uncovertebral joint to uh, mm -hmm. the full, full compression of the, the root frame. But there was no any the instability because uh, the compared to open, open uh, compared to open surgery, endoscopic surgery is just uh, uh, decompression the the bony structure. We uh, do not uh, damage uh, the of uh, muscle uh, uh, posterior, the ligament posterior, uh, some the paracentral, uh, uh, the paraspinal muscle. So there is no it, there is no any uh, the uh, instability postoperatively. Don't worry about this instability. Okay. okay. In the cervical, uh, post cervical approach, can we remove the uh, ventral osteophytes? Right, osteophytes. Yes. Uh, like if we approach from posterior side, can we remove the ventral osteophytes, ventral to the yes. nerve root? Right, right. So like this, the uncomfortable okay. joint, you can remove. Okay. So if you if, if you want to the resection of uh, hypertrophy of, of some uh, structure in the ventral side, you need to uh, decompression the widely and up and down the lamina the, between the the uh, upper and lower the pedicle, and then you can access to ventral osteophyte. And do you ever need to do a partial pedicolectomy sometimes? Removal of the pedicle, yes. part of the pedicle? Right, right, right. Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. But uh, uh, you don't need to, uh, to worry about uh, instability, post-operative, wider resection of uh, the bone structure because all the stenosis patients have a uh, uh, contralateral side or another, you know, the, another the joint, uncovertebral joint, more than... The 40 years old, the, the patient have uh, another uh, joint, uncovertebral uh, joint. Just the uh, one side, the uh, total facetotomy, not the, the increase instability postoperatively. So sometimes uh, why the, the pedicotomy, we have to to full the decompression. Okay, okay, and. Uh... Sir, I wanted to ask no, one thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. The in anterior entry, the trajectory of entry will depend upon the location of herniation, or there is a specific trajectory. First, we enter inside the disc, then we manipulate where we need to go. Let's say for a, a paracentral herniation or more of a herniation. So you anterior approach. The trajectory. Yes, yes, yes. Anterior approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anterior no. approach, yes. Yeah. Anterior approach. Yeah. Anterior approach, for instance. The trajectory, trajectory of entry. Ah, trajectory is uh, the, uh, just uh, the between the carotid, uh, uh, carotid complex. We can feel the ca common carotid artery with uh, the finger, in, in this finger palpation. So trajectory is uh, uh, between the carotid artery and uh, some hyoid bone. You can feel the uh, disc space. What if the disc is more on the left side compared to right side or central, uh, far close to foramina on the left side, and we are entering from the right side as entry? In case of uh, the paracentral disc or foramen, we can access to the posterior approach. But uh, some okay. case of huge disc, or, or central disco, we can do 
the, the anterior approach discectomy and the fusion surgery. Okay, sir. okay, okay. And uh, one question from my side, like uh, 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 you have seen you operating on the compressive myelopathy cases with bilateral radiculopathy. And uh, so how do you decide like whether to go with anterior approach or posterior approach? How do you decide in cases of compressive myelopathy? The myelopathy, so the, that's why we need to ch check out the dynamic MRI first. Uh, dynamic MRI. Right? Okay. The pathology reason, the, uh, if the pathology reason is located posterior, the, like uh, the hypertrophia of uh, like the flavum, we can approach to the posterior to remove uh, the thick ligand flavum. But the myelopathy may cause uh, myelopathy that will be the located in the anterior, uh, the, like a uh, huge disc, we can access to the anterior approach. It depends okay, on okay. what is the main the pathology reason. That's why we need to check up uh, dynamic MRI first. Okay, and can we can we decompress bilateral foramen uh, uh, posteriorly? No, no, it's not, <laughs> not, not easy. Possible. Impossible. Oh, Impossible. Uh, yeah, dominant, dominant first. Okay, okay. And have you ever encountered mm -hmm. any kind of post-operative kyphosis or progressive kyphosis after doing two or three level uh, uh, posterior no. labina foraminotomy? No, no, no. There is no the kyphosis because the posterior approach, uh, the, the one skin is three level decompression, there is no any damage of uh, the muscle, no detachment of muscle. So there is no... Uh, any the uh, uh, kyphosis change post operatively post approach. Okay, so you consider posterior approach much safer as compared to the anterior approach, particularly for the paracentral and uh, and the and the foramen and, and for foramenotomy, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, and have you ever encountered uh, any variations of the nerves uh, roots nerve roots while approaching posteriorly? Because what we expect is to get the a nerve horizontally across uh, horizontal to the dura, but sometimes we we doesn't see in that way. We don't see that way. So, do, have you encountered variations in the nerve root path? Double double root damage. Like double roots or like uh, yes. uh, conjoint roots or maybe. Um, uh, um, uh, superiorly set or inferiorly set nerve root like this? Right. That's right. Uh, so it's uh, with the endoscopy that you, you can see the, the ventral side uh, is uh, multiple root. Sometimes uh, the surgeon the might mistake because it's the same color like between the discus, disco and uh, the ventral uh, the motor root. So I have uh, two cases, two cases of uh, C5, C5 files. We should look careful. Okay, 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 okay. Manish, any, any other question from your side? Dr. Manish, are you there? And so, what what are your views about the recent uh, uh, technical development of inclinatory foramenotomy? Can we do it with your your technique? Sorry. Okay. There is a recently there is an introduction of a technique called inclinatory foramenotomy, posterior inclinatory foramenotomy. Can we do it with a, a uniportal approach? Uh, so first, you should try the the front first, uh, and uh, oh, it's, it's not working. So first, try the the front first, uh, and then mm -hmm. you can do the two level or three level the posterior approach decompression, mm -hmm. and then. Oh, so it's uh, not working. And then the anterior the approach HDF. 
And uh, oh, sorry, it's not working. Ah. Can you see the, this the photo? Yeah. Yes. So the, always you should use uh, the two hand, two hand surgery during the operation. Mm -hmm. Unipotal, unipotal operation is very safe because we can use a two hand. Mm -hmm. Two hand surgery, right? So the, uh, the not danger than as you think. The first try it. The posterior decompression for the foramen uh, stenosis and the central stenosis, and then you can try the HDF with huge the disc herniation. Was it trend okay. And one more question, last question from my side. Like uh, while doing the anterior cervical discectomy mm -hmm. or foramen uh, or uh, with uh, uh, with fusion. So, how do you put uh, needle, and thereafter, how many dilators you use? Like, uh, how, like, uh, up to uh, what is the size of the skin in season, and the number of the dilators, and the size of the dilators, and how do you use them? So you can use the, you know, the skin uh, anterior neck skin has a elasticity. Yes. Just uh, as a one point one point of five centimeter, you can make a uh, two centimeter with that. Uh, using elasticity, so we can insert the uh, five, uh, six, uh, seven, the uh, height, the uh, cage. Okay. Is it enough? Five, six, yes. seven. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Doctor Manish, are you there? I would like to thank sir because uh, he accepted our invitation on such a short notice and accepted uh, to give us lecture on uh, the most advanced topic probably currently in the world in the field of endoscopic spine surgery. We always look forward to learn from him his work and every month few papers are coming of him that teaches us a lot of advancement. So I would like to thank him from our society. Uh, from president, from uh, me as a general secretary, Dr. Santosh, and everybody, that so that he uh, enlighten us, keep on enlightening us in future also. Uh, and uh, really thankful for him to thankful to him to accept our invitation to give us talk on uh, such an advanced topic. Thank you, sir. So are you there? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank Thanks you. Thank you very much, sir. It, uh, such like uh, very interesting. <laughs> Come, so we would class. we would like to have you. We would like to have you again with the with the uh, master class sometime <laughs> on okay. PSLD. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you, sir. You can switch off. Uh, yes. Thank you. This thing. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Lim. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. And uh, you should be and careful to not, to not uh, contaminate the coronavirus. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> See you. Okay. Take care, sir. Be safe. Be safe, sir. Okay. Uh, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. And I would also like to thank all our listeners. They could come and listen to the masters himself. It was very difficult for us because he is the best and uh, you are listening him for the first time the topic he has mentioned which was never probably done anywhere in the world. So it's really nice of him that he could come and we'd like to thank him from bottom of our heart. Thank you very much, sir. And next, 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 next topic here. And uh, we would also like you to, again, one of the master like sir, to please come and uh, the topic would be bipotal endoscopic spine surgery. Again, somebody who wants to do best, uh, they should can come and join us on 29th, Korea time 
it should be again a good topic so anybody can come and join the same way and thank you very much everybody for coming and listening to the great master dr lim himself thank you dr manish thank you wonderful okay we'll okay everybody good night take care bye good night good night, good night manish take care manish take care bye 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 hello dr sanjay sorry we could not hello manish hello Yes. <laughs>